I'm Alex Hirsch, the voice of Beardy the Manitar. And I'm Jason Ritter, the voice of Dipper. Uh, Dipper versus manliness. Okay, so this, just to get it out of the way, this episode... <laughs> <laughs> I, Mike, Mike Rianda, who uh, does s- some of our commentaries and one of, one of our writers, um, if I have to mention it because even though he's not here, I can hear him yelling it from off camera. Just in my heart, I know he would want me to say this, that this was this w- this episode almost killed me. Like I was so frustrated with how this episode came out. And, and really, in, yes. And in retrospect, I don't have a problem with it. There's a lot of great gags. It's, it's a lot of sweet moments. Um, this episode was one Wolf of the 14. very first episodes we wrote, um, and it was one of these things where <clears throat> we were still figuring out the tone of the series, and what is the reality of this show? You know, if there's a spectrum where on one end you have X-Files, which is real and scary and spooky, you know, and on another end you have something like uh, Fairly Odd Parents, where mm-hmm. it's colorful and cartoony and it's kind of, it has that sort of... Uh, Peabody and Sherman, like, it's just, it's silly, right? Like, in my mind, I wanted this show to have a level of groundedness and level of reality and a sense that everything that was magic had some kind of, some kind of connectedness to the overall story. And so when we broke this episode, because this episode absolutely was pitched out by me. I was like, I think it would be fun to do an episode about puberty and about Dipper getting his first chest hair and about Dipper trying to figure out what that means. You know, when I was a kid, I was a late bloomer. I was the shortest kid in my sixth grade class. Um, Like, I had a squeaky little voice. Um, Like, and, you know, I think boys are always encouraged to become men and you don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, And to me, that was a source of conflict. And in retrospect, I was like, I was seeing it as a source of like, you know, as a source of conflict and comedy. And that's the thing we're looking for for these episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and these ideas of these characters who exemplified this sort of over the top and in fact dangerous and counterproductive, but alluring to Dipper example of masculinity. I was like, that will tell that story. That'll mm-hmm. help tell that story. Um, and uh, we had one of our writers, really funny writer, Tim McKeown, do the first draft of it and he came up with a lot of great jokes and a lot of the jokes you see right here with Stan at the table that opening this scene with do you have this in another animal that's a Tim McKeown <laughs> joke killer joke and it was a funny script and but I looked at the story and I suddenly had this feeling of like I think that the tone of this is not the tone of Gravity Falls like that this is too far away that the magic is so silly and so ungrounded and you've just got these monsters walking around in broad daylight like I thought this is a show about urban legends not a show about just like pro wrestler cow monsters walking around and calling each other bro and I I was freaked out and I I did a pass of the draft where I was trying to ground certain elements a little bit um, like but I remember like when the episode came back in animation like I had a little freak out like oh no I screwed it up this isn't the show I wanted to make uh burn it down um and <laughs> wow and 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 I remember there was a little bit of the sort of back and forth in the writers you know I, I remember so far as going to the executives and being like can we just like not air an episode can we just like not wow, play it, it got like that it got to that point it, in my heart at the time yeah I had a different idea of what I dreamed Gravity Falls would be and I was like this isn't it this isn't it yeah um and you know when it came out, it was fine. And I recently went back and watched it, and it's like got some great jokes in it. Yeah, it's very it's so sweet. Fun. Dipper and Baba is like became something the fans love. Disco girl, um, like Disco Girl is something the fans loved. And like you know, we're living in a time where there is massive cultural upheaval about how to be most uh, sensitive and useful and progressive. Uh, about conversations about gender and this episode was written just a few years ago but practically in another world when you consider yeah. those types of conversations and I was a little scared to go back and watch it like oh no like did we make a point or suggest something that felt you know really out of step with the modern moment and going back and watching it it feels, doesn't at all it feels funny it feels sweet the heart feels yeah. in the right place and you know I would take any critique if someone had it but watching this I was like you know what like the whole thing basically reads as a, as a gentle-hearted critique of toxic masculinity yeah and, exactly and like and I, Dipper rejects it and Dipper end. rejects it um and so like I think it's like going back on it like I'm chill about it and yeah. like this was one of these things where you don't know what you're making until you've made it yeah you have an idea in your head of what it is and then you watch it later and like I think all the things I wanted Gravity Falls to be at certain moments it was yeah. and in other moments it was something else that was also fun. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like and like so like when I mention like that this used to be my most hated episode I don't mean to disrespect the things about it that are good or the people who worked hard on it it, it had to do with 
Like, You're a, how do I reach this vision I have? Yeah. And have I betrayed that vision? Um, and it's always, what you create is going to be this interesting mix of the thing that was in your gut and all these other factors, mm -hmm. right? And and you'll create something that you couldn't predict, um, but that's also what's really cool and exciting yeah. about making something and making TV. And it's probably good that I didn't have more control because I'm, I'm like going back, I'm like, this is a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the, the, the biggest change that I made to this episode late in the, the game because I was so stressed out about it. I actually did a lot I did a lot of work on this episode personally some more than even other episodes because I was so like it's not right mm -hmm. um, like the last thing that I actually this wasn't in the script um, it wasn't even in the storyboard it was in every episode there's a script then you go to storyboard and then there's a pitch and before we pitch the storyboards I pitch the storyboard to the whole studio um, and I'll often do some adjustments some late adjustments to the story and I changed like right before I pitched it to everyone I added all that stuff with Baba and Dipper's obsession with pop music because that used to not be in the episode oh really yeah um, and because Dipper was having this arc about Dipper needs to overcome this this idea about a certain type of man he has to be but he also has to have something that that he personally loves, that he was at war with. Yeah. And I kind of realized, like, oh, I was, I actually loved all, I, I loved all the top 40 hits as a kid. Yeah. But I also felt like I'm smarter than this. These are dumb. I need to be smart and I need to be cool. Um, I, I, I totally remember. I mean, especially, you know, that those, these sort of, preteen, teenage, early teenager years, you're trying to sort of navigate the new terrifying world. Well, and and there's all these things statement. that you can't do. Every piece of taste is a statement. If you yeah. say, oh, I like this band, someone's like, oh, I guess you like wearing sandals. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, like, what? That's, I just thought I liked this one song. Like everything signifies some big cultural or yeah. tribal identity. And so liking anything is Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, because like you're judged for anything. The safest, coolest way, and this is sort of when I had this little moment of rejecting cool. And maybe it was because it was sour grapes or whatever. But I just yeah. I had this period of time of trying to be cool. But it seemed to me that in order to be cool, you had to not like anything. Dis you, you had to take out your passion for things, and just everything was okay or like. You know, what would you think of that movie? I don't know. I didn't really like it. Like, that was the safest you could do. Yes. No one would ever challenge you if you didn't like something. But yes. if you did, you had to, like, justify it and, th you know, yeah, it made a statement about yourself, and it was it was scary. I, th I, I really love this episode. And actually, this was I, – I, I was at a bachelor party, mm -hmm. and it was just a bachelor party where we, like, rented a house, and we just stayed in the house and played games. It was like the <laughs> – it was just all of Sounds it was a bunch of dudes. Sounds pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It was like <laughs> one of my favorite times ever. And I, this episode was airing. <laughs> I sort of put it out there. I was like, "Do you guys want to watch see this cartoon? I'm in this cartoon that I'm in that I'm really proud of." And we all watched it. And when I saw this this group of grown men <laughs> laughing and enjoying this show, I was like, "Oh my god! Okay, so I'm not the I uh, like this is for everybody." And I and, like and how you such, had it. For you a bachelor party, all of these manliness that's so questions perfect. are so perfect. Well, you had the exact same arc Dipper did, which is, I like this thing that's kind of young and childish, and I want to show it to all my manly friends, and are they going to think I'm cool? Yeah, exactly. And then they loved it, and yeah, it was it was a satisfying thing. Well, but... and that makes me feel really good, because like, since I've come around, right? You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And like, there's so many jokes and moments that people have made gifts of, and people quote, and stuff, and like, I'm like, okay, like, there's... I, th I think you're right. I think... If an episode has a core of truth to it, yeah. even if that truth is delivered in a really silly, over-the-top, wacky, goofy way, that, that the value can be felt. Yes. Even if even if something even if an episode like this sort of can stick out tonally next to the other episodes, like that there's there's something truthful in the experience. Yes. You know, even though it's being shown in this like really, really bizarre manner. Um, I gotta give a shout out to the director of this episode, Aaron Springer. Um, uh, amazing artist um, and uh, he, he did a lot of these that that little dipper sup with that little cheek that cute pose <laughs> that was drawn by him a lot of the most bizarre expressions were drawn by him um, uh, Nikki Yang also board artist, artist on this episode Eric Fountain uh, all did really really pushed insane expressions um, this was a uh, this th 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 their names uh, their names were uh, something I added at the last second. Uh, p pituitor, pubertor, testosterone. Like, I was like, I I if the joke is this obvious, I need to be as on the nose as possible. Yeah, exactly. Um, th this idea that Dipper... 
<laughs> they're, <laughs> they're constantly fighting each other. Um, yeah, I mean, we were trying to show it's not good to be like this, <laughs> but that yeah. Dipper, Dipper is at least open to being into it. Well, again, it's you know you, you have these things that you are that you think you're supposed to be, and actually, you know, it, it's a great the Phil Rinda drawing. Thing, <laughs> that's amazing. But but the, I th I do think it's like the the toughest thing is to tr be sort of true to yourself with with no. And he stands up to all of these people and just you know, uh, it's we all are are designed to sort of socially kind of yeah. blend into our surroundings, and so. If you grew up around Manitars, you probably would be a Manitar, but Dipper <laughs> is, uh, he's able to sort of stand up for what feels right in his gut, even with all this pressure, which I think is such a cool thing for uh, all humans, men and women. Yeah, I think, I think one, I had, I, one of my things that I had tried to change about this episode that I just didn't have time for was I did think like, this is an episode about Dipper fighting with himself about masculinity and Grunkle Stan is sort of designed, when we were trying to design the character of Grunkle Stan, we, we had artists to do different versions of him. Um, a lot of the first designs that came back, he was really, he was skinny, he was kind of emaciated, he was kind of old and withered, and I was yeah. like, I kept saying like, no, he's gotta be beefy, he's gotta have these hairy shoulders. I mean, I was like, why are you making him like this weird like ex-pro wrestler, like what is this body type? <laughs> and I didn't have a reason at the time, I was like, it's just, that's Stan. Stan is that kind of guy. And then like, looking back on it, I was like, oh, like, I was subconsciously trying to create this sort of more masculine trope for yeah. to, to create conflict with Dipper, right? Like, Absolutely. That, like that, that is a sense of Dipper would never admit that he wants to be like Stan. He'd be like, oh, Stan is this big jerky con man. He's a liar. I'm a scientist. I'm an intellectual. But at the same token, like he does want to be a man. You yes, know? He, exactly. he does want to be like some of those things that Stan are. Um, and I had thought, oh, maybe it would be a more truthful or more beneficial story if it's, if it's Dipper and stan the whole episode um but then you wouldn't get gags like the pain hole <laughs> <laughs> the pain hole is one of my favorite <laughs> jokes. I, I got i think what i loved so much about the pain hole was that we had so many notes being like please explain what is in the pain hole and i'd say pain yeah. and they'd be like what is this a reference to and i'd be like it's a hole in the ground and there's pain inside yeah and they'd be like is there going to be blood i'm like it's just pain and i could tell everyone wanted to cut this joke but no one could think they like they felt that we were crossing a line but they couldn't put it into words <laughs> so we got to keep it well i also love that that then the pain hole becomes whatever the whatever the viewer imagines, it imagines to it. be yeah exactly um we uh it hurts whatever it is for this sequence we needed a, a training training montage i love this song um i wrote the dumbest lyrics i could think of if you actually go and listen to these lyrics they're utterly meaningless it's like the mountain roars, the eagle cries. It doesn't I love uh, mean keep on anything. shaving that hairy uncle or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So I kind of I, I wrote the kind of lyrics to the song, and then we brought in Jess Harnell, amazing voice uh, voiceover guy, uh, also is the voice of Wacko on Animaniacs, and he is this this you gotta win the prize. That's him. Teach um, your uncle how to wear a cummerbund. <laughs> yeah. So we actually I changed the lyrics when we were in the booth because he was doing it to this, and the sequence was so ridiculous. I was like, can we add? Uh, I don't really know what's happening um <laughs> teach your uncle keep on shaving that hairy uncle like we were we were making fun of ourselves and how dumb it was like some of this uh, g just came out of fatigue and just like <laughs> trying to amuse ourselves um the uh so i think originally in this episode dipper we always wanted to have a multi-bear um originally he was called the bear bear the idea was he's a bear made out of bears and he's He's called the Bear Bear, and the whole reason he was called the Bear Bear was so at some point Dipper could comfort him and go, they're there, Bear Bear. <laughs> um, but I guess there was some legal issue where there was like a bear in Russia called Bear Bear. We couldn't use oh. it, so he became the multi-bear, and they're there, Bear Bear, never got to make it into the vernacular of Gravity But here Falls it is fans. now. But now Today. it lives. They're there, Bear Bear. Uh, all these tattoos uh, uh, designed um, by, uh, I, think, I think our prop designer Andy did these, and they were originally inspired by uh, Eric Fountain's drawings. Um, Greetings, young. Nah, he's just the offering. That is my sister's giving me a crazy look. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my sister's here listening to us, and she's just <laughs> laughing. It's at the terrifying that they eat their own. Uh, they, that that, oh, the that they eat their own later. The <laughs> if you think that's <laughs> yeah. terrifying, wait. Watch him reach into his chest and pull out a spear. Does oh, that yeah, happen that in the scene? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Storyboarded by Eric Fountain. They, uh, we had to make that green uh, blood because if it was red, they wouldn't play it on the channel. But green, reaching into your own chest, pulling out a bone knife. As long as it's covered in green goo, totally cool. What about uh, fireplace animals? They are allowed to bleed uh, blood out there. Uh, the mounted, the mounted fireplace animals in the in Pacifica Northwest. Mansion? You know, there there wasn't a lot of consistency with uh, <laughs> what was okay and what wasn't okay. Uh, watch Dipper t tucks that. Dipper originally tucked that into his loin cloth and then like we realized there's no way he could fit that in there so he just hides it behind his back <laughs> and it just disappears and, and doesn't come back um I'm okay. the uh B baba came from i was trying to think as i said at the last that was something i added at the last minute where i wanted baba? to yeah, so something I added the last one, I wanted, I wanted there to be something that Dipper liked that he could embrace as well. As, that, that it wasn't just him rejecting it, something it was also him embracing something. Um, and But I was trying to think, like, what, what would that have been for me? And I was thinking about how my sister listened to a lot of music that I couldn't stand. This, like, synthy Euro nonsense. Great. That was written by Tim McKeown. I love Our that. Great writing and great boarding by uh, Eric Fountain. I love the deers all through Gravity Falls. They have a they have a nice. Uh, we have a lot of deer. There. Yeah. Um. But uh, I was I was thinking about how I loved I loved Ace of Base, even though I didn't admit it. My sister played it every morning, and I secretly was like, Yeah. It's how got, can you not? It's got a good. I did see the sign. <laughs> um. But I was like, No, no, I hate it. It's lame. It's lame. Um. And then I was like, I tried to think of a parody of Ace of Base for this, and I was like, That's such a deep cut that I can't parody it. Yeah. So I was like, ABBA is also like, they're singing phonetically, they don't really speak English. That's like enough of a touchstone that I, could, I also, people I might can, know it. I can flate at ABBA and Ace of Bass a lot for whatever reasons. Maybe all the A's and B's, but uh, happy well, songs. Ace of the thing I remember about Ace of Bass was that they would have like, they'd have this, the, the singer and then they'd have that like aggressive guy Ooh, always come right. in. It would be like, you know, like, uh, and it opened up my eyes. My eyes are open. Like it wasn't in that song, but... <laughs> Child, why have you come here? Multi bear, I seek your head! Or one of them, anyway. There's like, what, six? Six heads? This is foolish. Leave now or die. So be it. That's boarded by Aaron Springer right there. When you this see is like the these. Great Alfred Molina as well, right? Oh, yes. Uh, Alfred Molina, uh, amazing actor, agreed to come in and be the multi bear. Uh, <laughs> He didn't ask what is a multi bear. He just read it with the gravitas that we had we had hoped for. He yeah. Uh, did a did a really good job. I, it's it's I mean I you know it's the purpose story. is not to be manly, but that's it, pretty impressive what Dipper just did. There. <laughs> just to you know, say, I mean, know, we, we gotta be honest. Like it's pretty. Dipper makes a lot of progress in a very short amount of time <laughs> in this episode. I mean, they 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 he, he literally just felled the multi bear. He that's that's cool. That was and that was another one of my concerns about this episode was like in my mind this entire series is a coming of age story, and if he comes of age too far too fast, where do I go from there? Like we had. You know, we had, there's a lot of episodes that were a little bit pun based. It's like we had Little Dipper. Oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, we shrink him. We had Double Dipper. We clone him. And I was like, well, let's complete the trifecta. Let's do Big Dipper. And let's do an episode that's a parody of the movie Big, where Dipper wishes to be old and gets older. Oh, my gosh. Um, and we considered it, but it was like, once Dipper has been, once Dipper's been either a teen or an adult, like, we felt like the whole show's about growing up. The whole show's about right, the stage. Right. And it's almost. Like, I just undermined the series arc. Like, um, this is this constant tension of how do we do an episodic story that serves the point of the episode without weakening or diminishing or altering or screwing up the broader right. spirit of the show. But, I mean, something I learned, again, because this is the first time I ever made a show, the first time I ever wrote anything, I learned that, like, audiences tend to be a lot more forgiving of those types of things than I expected. You know, like, yeah. nobody looked at this and said, oh, well, Dipper's already felled a multi-bear. How am I supposed to believe that he's scared of fighting Robbie? Like, people just kind of, there was sort of this rubber band reality where people would be like, okay, that was this week. But each week, people would tend to take at face value if, if it was plausible and relatable, the conflicts the characters were going through. Nobody would say, well, that's absurd because last week he didn't do this. Right. They no, would no, yeah. say if... This episode, they said it's 2013, then they must be this old, and then that means that they wouldn't be wearing this clothes, and that that's wrong. Like, right, like right. they'd get obsessed <laughs> about things that were just bafflingly arcane, but about these broad character things, as long as they were acting in character and yeah. they were funny, people people are quite forgiving of things that I was less forgiving of as a writer. You know, 
I mean, to me, yeah, I, I, I never even put that together. To me, it's like the, he, he's, he's, he fells the multi bear because he's also been doing all this crazy stuff for all week. He's been he's hyped training. Up, he's hopped he's, up on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, he's, and I think it's also more forgivable because he's in – Gravity Falls is this – Gravity Falls is always meant to be a show that takes place between two worlds, yeah. both the world of reality and the world of magic and fantasy, but also the world of childhood and the world of adulthood mm-hmm. um, or, or teenhood. Um, and when characters are in the magic space, when they're – you know, when he's off in a cave with these creatures, he can kind of do things he could not do in front of Stan. Yeah. He could not have taken down that bear in front of Stan. It would break the reality of the show. Right, exactly. Right? Um, like – but he could do it off camera because it's it's sort of like he's in that place of magical growth, you know? Yeah. Like that, that, that's something that we were constantly, and again, it's, it's a feeling kind of thing. And it's something where we we're trying to balance that feeling. And, and there was some times where that balance felt off to me. And that's when I would get freaked out like, right. ah, the show is ruined. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I think collectively the efforts of the team, you know, got closer to that balance than I, than I often realized. Um, this is another great Tim joke is Mabel inexplicably being really excited to say here I am here I am it's me it's me I'm in the window you're talking to me this is my voice hi Dipper hi it's such a great sort of insight (laughs) okay I see I get it (laughs) I also love uh, Jennifer Coolidge as Lazy Susan. Uh, when I was when I was growing She's up so here, good. we would go to um, Groundling shows and just be blown away week after week by her and a bunch of other She's people. And so it was really phenomenal. exciting to get to work with her, even though you don't meet them, but you're like, I'm still counting that we work together. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer I had a Coolidge. scene with Alfred Molina just in that last. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge is hysterical, the oh voice of Lazy Susan. And she, she's, some people, you know, you tell them, oh, yeah, we're doing this little kid's cartoon show. They come in, they're a little impatient, you know, particularly if they're bigger stars. And, but Jennifer is, she lives to make people laugh. Yeah. And she would come in and she would improvise. She would add stuff. She never was satisfied. She always wanted to do more takes than I did. And I can get quite picky. And she'd be like, no, let's do another one. Because she always wanted to be as funny as possible. And I do wish we had, I do wish we had had more for Lazy Susan to do just because Jennifer is amazing. Yeah. Like nobody has a voice like her. No. And even this, this, (laughs) this whole tag of hers. (laughs) Which we, we we would often write these tags really late in the game because we just forgot to do them and then we needed something to fill time. Um, she also, was so her good laugh with this. early on in the episode where she laughs for a little too long. <laughs> I got hit by a bus. That's all her. Like it didn't say in the script, "laugh is too long." It was just we heard that laugh and we we're like, keeping it. 